is linked to poverty. One of the solutions to the climate crisis is the construction of a global universal commitment to solving the climate crisis, which can only come about if we commit ourselves at the same time to a struggle that involves the commitment of wealthy developed countries to finally addressing the, the crisis of extreme poverty and disease in the developing world. Martin Luther King Jr. once said, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. In our day and time, increasing CO2 anywhere is a threat to the future of civilization everywhere. And one of the barriers to building a global agreement that will finally solve the climate crisis is bridging the divide between the wealthy countries and the poor countries, the developed countries and the developing countries. The Richard H. Blom Center for Developing Economies will be one of the key places where that piece of the puzzle is solved and where it is fitted in as the capstone of the arch. In some of the materials uh, describing this center and its curriculum, there appears a quote from a good friend of mine, Gordon Gee, who was chancellor of Vanderbilt in my hometown of Nashville, now at Ohio State. It's a beautiful quote, and I may not have it exactly, but he said, when the bonds of, when the fabric of civilization becomes frayed, it is the task of the university to educate and train weavers. The fact that you have been willing, not only willing, but enthusiastic about the challenge of becoming weavers at a moment in time when that fabric is indeed frayed. It is unacceptable for those of us who, who have the privilege of being alive on this planet at this extraordinary moment to, for one second, look the other way when so many children are dying in poor countries, when so many families are suffering in abject poverty, when there's so much hunger and starvation, malnutrition, extreme diseases that could be easily cured if there is a commitment. Dick has uh, spent so much time in the Himalayas, he says that his spiritual home is there. And if you know him as well as I do, as a close, close friend, you know he means that literally. I was sharing with him earlier one of my favorite quotes from a great climber of the Himalayas, actually from Scotland, a hundred years ago, T.H. Murray. And this quotation uh, had such meaning for me. It resonated in my heart and it has stayed with me and I used it in the introduction of the first book that I wrote on the global environment 20 years ago. T.H. Murray wrote, there is one fundamental truth about every human endeavor, the ignorance of which condemns countless ventures to failure. And the truth is this, the moment one commits oneself, providence moves also. Whatever the word providence means to you, if you hear it in spiritual terms as I do, if you hear it in another sense as others do, there is a force in this world that is unleashed when the human heart makes a commitment to goals that are good and true. Mahatma Gandhi said the most powerful force in the world is Satyagraha, or roughly translated, I'm told, as truth force. And by committing yourselves to learn about how you can be a part of the solution, to global poverty, you will help to unleash that force of commitment that will see us through this moment of perilous transition. And it is a moment of peril. The entire North Polar ice cap is melting right before our eyes. All of the ice and snow in the Himalayas, which provides in its seasonal melting half the drinking water for India and Indochina and part of China is melting. All of the other symptoms of the climate crisis, too numerous to mention in these short remarks here, are crying out to us to awaken to the challenge that is facing 
your generation and all of us who are alive today. A great theorist once said years ago, we as human beings have a tendency to confuse the unprecedented with the improbable. To look at something that has never happened in the past and assume that it is highly unlikely to happen in the future. But in the last 100 years, we have seen the population of this planet go from a little over one and a half billion to 6.7 billion today. And 6.7 billion multiplied by all of the power in the new technologies that the industrial revolution and the scientific uh, and technological revolution still accelerating has put in the hands of people all around this earth, including uh, the ability to convert the vast resources of carbon-based fuels inefficiently into an extremely dangerous accumulation of greenhouse gases in the thin shell of atmosphere surrounding this planet makes this an extraordinarily perilous transition. We can navigate successfully through these narrows toward a future that is bright and sustainable if we include in the struggle against the climate crisis a struggle against global poverty, against extreme uh, poverty and disease. There are always those who say it cannot be done, of course. I remind you that 48 years ago, another young president, we have a, a young president now, another young president issued a challenge to this nation to put a person on the moon and return him back safely in 10 years. And many said that cannot, that could not be done. But eight years and two months later, Neil Armstrong set his foot on the surface of the moon. As he did so, the systems engineers in the control room in Houston, Texas, cheering, elated, invigorated, had an average age of 26. Which means at the moment when they first heard that challenge, their average age was 18. This challenge will require a commitment of the head and the heart from those of you who are awake, who have understood the moment that we live in, and who understand the necessity of coming together to take on this challenge. By the way, I have to say, Chancellor, that this project surely is eligible for some stimulus funding because never have I seen a project that is more obviously shovel ready than this project. There is an old African proverb that says, if you want to go quickly, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. We have to go far, quickly. <laughs> Which means we have to get our act together. Now with this program and with the commitment in your hearts manifested already in your passion to learn and to become weavers, you have given us and we look around us and see we have everything that we need with the possible exception of political will. But as the United States of America, again, just demonstrated a few months ago, in our country, political will is a renewable resource. Congratulations and thank you.